father of the Anakim. Actually, a man who was so big, bigger than Goliath. You think that Goliath was the biggest giant in the Bible? Read your Bible very well. There was Abba. And then Abba gave birth to who? To Anakim. That was why all the other Anakims were all referred to as Anakims. Because there was one who was bigger than Goliath. That Goliath looked like a dwarf in front of Anakim. You were unable to enter into this mountain of dominance, of inheritance. Because there was a spiritual giant in front of you. Do you not see the seven lamps in front of you that the Lord has prepared for you? That you must walk into, you must step into, and you must have dominance once you have it. But you will never be able to get into those things unless you understand it that mountains are spiritual channels from where spiritual sources happen. The seven lamps that the man of God saw were representing seven mountains of influence. And what were those seven mountains of influence? Listen to me. And pay attention well. I want you to pay attention well. Dominance is what we need as believers, as Christians. We hear nowadays that with the moment you start to teach about, look, you need to be involved in politics. As a woman of God, as a man of God, you must have a say in politics. What do you have believers saying? Eh, eh, eh. Mm -mm. Politics and church don't mix. It's a lie. Politics and church do mix. Because it is the church that gives power to politics. From the days of old up until now, the church has been the one influencing politics. Governments were built around the church. The moment you say, ah, you should get into business. Ah, 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 eh, eh. They said that money is the root of all evil. Listen to me. Read your Bible, dum dum. It says the love of it, not money. If it is evil, why do you touch it? Why don't you go buy bread with the leaves? There are seven mountains of influence that if we are to dominate as the Christian, as the Christian society, as the Christian brethren and sisters, listen to me, we must have influence in those seven mountains. The first mountain that we need to have dominance in. Listen to me. Please write this one down. It shall be good for you later on in the future. Give me this mountain. Tell your neighbor, say, give me this mountain. Zerubbabel. The first mountain in 2020 you need to totally and utterly have dominance in. Number one is politics. politics because it is in politics that laws and legislature is passed that either promote or restrict the church a man can decide sitting in his house to say that tomorrow listen to me I do not know which country it is but it's in Africa here I think it's in Nigeria a man may just walk up one minute and he says People, when they go to church, they must pray for no more, no more than three hours. And there shall be no more all-night prayers. In Nigeria, and the law was put into the system. Anyone who does that, they are arrested. The Christians were all crying. Ah, we we'll pray against him. We we'll pray against him. What? Get up in the morning. I'm raising cases. We curse you, Senator so-and-so. We curse you for what you are doing. Kiss him in front of his face. Why do you kiss him in secret? You are afraid because of the power he yields. Go to him in his office and say, I kiss you for what you have done. A man decided because he has got dominance in politics to restrict the church and the church was closed in Nigeria. Why was it closed? Because there was no one to counter the man 
in politics. No one will occupy the, the same level of office or even a higher one to say, Mr. Man, what you are saying is nonsense. Let my people go. No one could do it. And all you are taught to believe is, no, no, stay away from those things. Don't do anything. God, listen to me. Your prayer, your prayer point for 2020, listen to me, it should be only one and only one. God, every place that you allow me to dominate, put me there. You're not understanding this one here. You're not listening to what I'm saying. The second mountain of influence that you as a believer in 2020 needs to have is the mountain of religion. Religion. What is religion? Religion is so powerful. Many have killed and died for a cause of religion. There is no one living in this world who is not following something. Whether you think you're not following something, you are following something unknowingly. The mountain of religion. Hundreds and hundreds of millions of people, billions of people worldwide are, in, are into religion. And he who controls religion controls billions of mindsets. A man today can wear a vest, wear a top on, a, on top of it, go to a marketplace and say, Allah Akbar, and blow himself up for a cause of religion. How powerful it is. Dominance. The person who will tell you to blow yourself up, who is not blowing himself up, he will tell you, go blow yourself up. When you get to heaven, you'll be rewarded by 20 virgins. And you'll be given a reward. Imagine in heaven. I don't know which heaven it is. If you kill yourself, your reward shall be 20 virgins. So you died so that you can go to heaven to, to flower 20 innocent girls. You, you, went, you died to heaven so that you can go to heaven to have sex. Are you serious? You can get sex here. You are dying for it so that you can get it in heaven. The mountain of religion. The third mountain of influence. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you need this mountain. You need to dominate in this mountain. The third mountain of influence that you need to get is the mountain of media. Oh, somebody needs to hear me. Whether you keep quiet or not, I will say it. Media. The platform where realities are either altered or spoken in truth. Right now, listen to me, in 1968, if I wanted to reach 10 million people preaching to them, I would need at least 10 years of evangelizing every single day to reach 10 million people. But today, right now, as we are doing this service right now, this cam camera is connecting to me through media. Ten million people are connected right now watching. And he who controls and he who has influence in these things has got the power to alter what you must learn and what you must believe in. They've got the power to change you. The mountain of media. Imagine today in the mountain of the media, we have got a believer who is standing for it. Somebody who is controlling media from Jesus' standpoint of view. Do you know in America, on their social, on their TVs, they cannot say God or Jesus. You know that. 
But you can say the F word and it is not censored. You can say the B word and it is not censored. But if you say God, they'll say, Gee. but you said Jesus. Gee. Praise the T. Ah, ah. Hallelujah. Glory be to T. IJ. God. Censorship board has actually said that the name of God must be censored out. Who made it? It is somebody who controls the platform that is bringing you that message. He doesn't want to hear the name of God being said. He says, say anything else, Satan, whatever you want to do, say whatever. But God shall not be said on this media platform. I prophesy, if somebody is listening to me today, I prophesy with this day today, if somebody is hearing me this today, you will control media in the name of Jesus. May God hand you the power to have media in your right hand. May you own your own CNN, your own news network. May you own your own DSTV. I a platform that belongs to you and entirely to you that you do not have to answer to anyone for anything at any time. I receive it. May you be that person. Yes. Hallelujah. Which mountain are we on? Four. The other mountain that you need to receive, a mountain of influence that you need to get is the mountain of arts and entertainment. Do you know, listen to me, <laughs> the mountain of arts and entertainment is the mountain. It is the mountain. Ah, this is a dangerous one. The mountain of arts and entertainment is the, is the mountain, is the platform of expression to show what a person has the potential to achieve. It is a mountain of displaying wealth, of displaying success. The moment right now you mention about entertainment, Right now, for your entertainment, you have got your Kim Kardashian, Kanye West, you have got uh, your Kobe Bryant, you have got your Michael Jordans, you have got uh, everyone who's in the entertainment field, who entertains you. And the people who entertain you, they influence you. You see grown men fighting. I, 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 one day I found two men, we know them. Two men, we thought they were about to beat each other up. You are an idiot, you are an idiot, you are a stupid fool. You are a stupid fool. You, you are a fool. Ah, you, if you're not my friend, I would have beat you up. I said, ah, what's wrong? Please, please. You are friends. What's the problem? I said, how can you say that uh, Sierra 7 is better than uh, I said, is it a disease? Who's, what's Sierra 7? I said, Cristiano Ronaldo. Ah, ah. You want to fight over football. Sierra 7 cannot be, hey, how can Sierra 7 be bigger than Messi? Hey, hey, I, I, yo. I looked at his eyes. His eyes were red. He wasn't faking it. He was very angry. Entertainment. How many right now, if I say, how many Manchester United fans are here? How many Liverpool fans are here? How many Chicago Bulls fans are here? When your team loses, you feel sad. Hallelujah. Can I tell you the next mountain? Which mountain is that now? Number five. The mountain of education. Ah, shake your neighbor and say, neighbor. Are you hearing? The mountain of education. Ha, yarozo, papa, telekizo, prahidae. The mountain of education where mindsets are molded. You spend 20 years, 18 to 20 years of your life in school. Do you know that? The average human being spends 18 to 20 years having your mindset molded to a belief.
And he who controls, who molds your mind. He who controls what he feeds into your mind. He who controls the syllabus you believe in. Dominates. A man called Darwin told us that we came from baboons. A whole you. A whole you. You received a message a few days ago from your crush, your lover, whoever, and they said you are a snake. Not a nyoka snake, you are a whole snake, you are a whole meal. And you have the audacity to believe Darwin to tell you that you come from a monkey. A baboon. I, w I grew up around baboons and the monkeys. I'm African. I went close to a baboon one day. I looked at it like this. I looked at this thing here. I said, Charles Darwin must have thought we are idiots. How? This into how my sister did you see yourself in the mirror eh you know how beautiful you are and somebody says you came from a monkey it's an insult but it is being taught in school today because there is somebody sitting on the mountain of education who says put it there now, when you try to tell your child, where did we come from? Baboons, mama. Baboons. You are a big baboon. I'm a little baboon. We all baboons. Because somebody thought it necessary to limit your potential, your greatness. God says, I created you in my image and likeness. It's an insult not only to you, but to God. The one who says you are created in my image and somebody says you are, came from a baboon. Who are they persecuting? Who are they insulting? They are insulting your God. Whenever you believe in the doctrine that you came from a baboon, they are saying that your God is a baboon. Because you are created in his image and likeness. Is Jesus a baboon? Imagine going to heaven. Having spent your life, giving your life to Christ and saving souls. And then you get to heaven, you're happy. Hallelujah. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Ah, whoo. Hallelujah. I'm about to go to the throne of God, and you see to go to the throne, and you see a baboon. Woo, 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 woo. Are we that stupid? Hallelujah. May you control the mountain of education. May it be for your inheritance. Ay, ay, ay. Next mountain. Which mountain number are we on? Family. The mountain of family. Do you know that society has been destroyed? I read a research somewhere. Me, me I love to learn every single day. I read a research somewhere, and they said that 78% of children who end up in prison, hmm, who end up in prison, juveniles or early adults who end up in prison, came from a broken home. A home where the father was not available, where the mother was a prostitute, a the broken system where there was no respect, where there were no morals or principles taught. Majority of them are in prison. A person who does not fear to kill a person because they were not taught to fear the Lord. Why would they fear a person if you cannot fear God? It has now become so fashionable. Eh? It is very fashionable. In our, in our time. Very, very fashionable to actually come from a broken home. When you hear these young dudes and girls talk about, you know, their stepdad and the stepmom, you know, you, 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 we, we know it. We're like, oh, shame. I'm sorry about that. You know, 
that you that your family ended up like that it wasn't your intention and you know but they pick that's life but they say to you know stylishly you know so my stepdad you know <laughs> my stepdad my my stepdad you know I'm ayaya ratata burukosita la ruzuzu zuza dega tie my tie tie my shoe how can i cross river jordan without a cup of tea something is wrong here how can it be fashionable to display a broken family? Huh? It has become so fashionable that a father can actually take his own son to go clubbing. That's the son of a broken family. I read somewhere of another celebrity. His son he had a girlfriend. And the girlfriend was so beautiful <laughs> that the father went and took and snatched the girl from the son. And this is a black celebrity in America. And after he took it, because it's a broken family system, instead of the boy to fight the father and say, what have you done embarrassing me? They were spotted on a vacation the son is a new girlfriend. The father is with the girlfriend of the son on a boat. Okay, so what is that? Your, your ex-girlfriend is now your stepmother. What is going on? Broken family. And the media headline is like, beautiful couple spends time on holiday. Because somebody is controlling the mountain of family and someone else is controlling the mountain of media. Therefore, even if how broken it seems, it is portrayed as beautiful for you to accept. I love my father. He's there. Took care of me all my life. But if he dares put his hand... The thunderbolts. <laughs> but we came from a family system where we were told that this is wrong. No matter if the word says it is right, just because everyone is doing it does not make it right. That is where we are taught. I came from a system where beating up, this woman used to beat me up every day. It was like a ritual. You know, when you don't get beaten up, <laughs> you, don't, you feel something is missing. Yeah. You are sitting in the house at 8 o'clock. Something is missing. Did I not eat? I ate. Did I bath? I bath. Did I do my homework? I did my homework. I must have done something. While you are busy thinking, you start scratching your buttocks. <sighs> Did I not do? What did I not do? <laughs> Your battle is reporting. Registry was not taken today. Bring it, bring it. <laughs> I, I will tell you the truth. My mother you, would, be, would beat you for anything. <laughs> You break a cup, you beat it. You do not do the dishes. Do not wash your clothes. If you bath after five o'clock, if you do not eat fast, if you eat slow, if you breathe, if you don't breathe, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to, I remember one day I got angry. I said, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. He says, go. <laughs> and after you kill yourself, I'll come beat you. <laughs> Just come here. <laughs> I was bathing one day. He says, no one baths after, it was after five o'clock was the time when my father is coming from work. So the bathroom must be empty, clean for him. Because he is the father of the house. The Bible says he is the father. The, you know, the term father, we have got people who do not understand this thing. The term father is, comes from the Hebrew word Abba. Hmm? 
And Abba simply means source or sustainer. The Greek word for father is patek. Patek or patek. So your father or the father in the house must be a source, must be a sustainer. Are you know what I'm saying? I think that is a teaching that I'll need to do one day for people to understand who is a father and who's not. You see, the, 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 the man was formed from the dust of the earth. Woman came from the rib, which means that the woman was built and the man was formed. That is why women are pleasing to look at. Because God built them. Men, that's why just see me. When God was now making women, He was now correcting. He says, Big belly, no, let me make it smaller. Flat buttock waist, let me put calves. Make the face more beautiful. You know, there are two types of people. There are those who are, the Bible says you are beautifully, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. There are people who are wonderfully made. You look at them and say, wow, glory be to God. My God, you are a wonder to look at. You are wonderfully made. And then there are other people who are fearfully made. You look at them and fear comes upon you. Look at their face and say, my God, are you a soldier? <laughs> Why? Your face is very scary. You can scare an enemy away. I don't know. If you're in a relationship, or if the person is sitting next to you, please find a category to put them. Look at them and say, you are what, what, mate? I love you like that. <laughs> we would be beaten up for getting for bathing late. My father, five o'clock was this time because he was the abba. He's the source. He's the one who brings the money in the house. He's the one who brings the bread. So when he comes back from work, he must not have pressure with you. Who is just eating, taking his money to <laughs> going to school with it? No. I always tell people that you know, you should count it as a privilege that your wife or your woman goes to work. A woman does not have to work. Do you understand what I'm saying? A woman does not have to work. It's not a law that she must. Because there must be only one source, which is you. When your woman is working, it's a privilege for you. You must thank her for, for going to work and say, I thank you. If you see a household or a relationship being sustained by a woman, something is wrong. The woman has become the Abba. And you have become the Pateki. will get you a dress, wear a nice dress, start wearing it, put makeup, lipstick. That is your portion. Before Adam could have Eve, he was given a job. If there is somebody, listen to me, let me say it now. If there is a son of mine, or there is a man up here who is looking to get married and you don't have a job, may God not allow any child, any innocent girl to come your way. You will not make any innocent child suffer. He who does not work must not eat. You will not eat that child. And the women are quiet. I'm on your side. I'm on your side. You are quiet. Ah! And you hear the guys say, ah, these girls are now gold diggers. 
Eh, they, are, they are not gold diggers. All they think about is money. Why would they not think about money? They are now gold diggers. They, they are gold diggers. At least they are digging for gold. What are you doing? Dololo. At least she has a job. She's digging for gold. She's a miner. What are you? Dololo. It is not a crime for a girl not to want to suffer with you. That does not make a prostitute or a slave queen or a person who wants things. No. Your job is to provide security. Give her a future she can look forward to. So that she can help you in fulfillment of your duty that God has given you. Where will she help you when you do not have a five-year plan for your own life? Where will you be in five years? You know what? I'm like the wind. I move with the wind. You know, you are Ruach. The wind of God is direction. It does not move with no direction. Hallelujah. So, for us, getting back to my story, I keep on moving and going into teachings. Five o'clock was the time for my father. He has to come back and there is no one in the house. Everything is clear, nice. Hallelujah. I remember one day, family, I finished playing late. Go to the bathroom. I sneaked into the bathroom. And I started bathing. And mother comes and says, so the bathroom door had the lock on it. Then I said, yes. Then I said, what time is it that you are taking a bath? I kept quiet because I knew what was coming. Then I heard the walking. Then I heard the sound, something breaking. I said, Mutuem Pitches. That's the tree. The tree is now suffering on my behalf. Then she comes again, knocks on the door. I'm bathing. The door is locked. She has no way of getting inside. I'm inside. She knocks and says, and I said, yes, as if I don't know. <laughs> Who's it? <laughs> then she said, open the door. <laughs> I know if I open the door, the whole bathroom will be smelling of peaches and everything else. I'm, I'm standing by the door naked. And I've made my condition very wet, nice, because I'm bathing, so the skin is very soft, ready for beating. Yeah. Then she says, Eddie! <laughs> I said, Eddie! She's knocking, open the door! I'm not opening the door. Eddie, open the door! I will not open the door. Then she says, Eddie, if I enter in there, I quickly went and I opened the door. are you going to enter if I don't open? But you, family, we were taught to be afraid. Our mother did not have to tell us to get out of the house when, when elders are there. It was just a look. You are sitting there, you just... <laughs> my, father, my father once slept me. I remember, he slept me. I'm talking about family values. Family value systems, a proper bringing up that made me to be what I am today. My father once left me one day. My father was talking to his sister, our late auntie in from Norton. They were talking. My father is a slow speaker. He doesn't speak fast like me. I don't know where I got this thing. My father would take his time talk. You see, we will go uh, on the weekend. Uh, you know, that's how he speaks. I'm there. I'm happy my auntie is there. Papa is there. Auntie is there. I'm in the middle. 
So my father, they were planning to go somewhere. I remember it was the journey they were going on that weekend. So auntie had come so that they prepared to go together. So my father's not talking. So uh, uh, we will plan and uh, uh, plan to go when? This weekend. And uh, I'll call the other uncles and tell them that we are going when? I'm listening. I said, this weekend. <laughs> Get out. A strong uh, th that's a strong family. Do you know when God blessed me, do you know what I did? Uh, my mother is there. I bought a shoes and a blanket and I went to thank you and I said, thank you for spanking me. <laughs> if you had not spanked me, I would not be here today. It is by your rebuke, your correction that made me to be what I am today. Nowadays, if in America, in England, you want to beat up your child, say, I'll call 911. I call the police on you. You'll be arrested. You'll be taken away. I said, yes, I'll be taken away. You'll be in a foster home. Do you see what is happening here? A child has the audacity to talk back to the parents because the family system has been made to be weak. He said, love them. No, 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 no. You need to talk to your child. A child will look at you and say, I hate you, mom. Do you know how much of a death sentence to say those words in Africa? To your African parent, I hate you. She will become terminated all of a sudden. <laughs> what did you say? She becomes deaf all of a sudden. What did you say? Repeat what you said. Said I was, uh, some, somebody said I was in the mall. And as I was in the mall, I was walking. Hmm? As I'm walking in the mall, blah, 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 blah. There is a white woman with a child there. And this is a black man. They are walking in the wall more. And the, the mother is having clearly a, a, a problem with the child, the son. She keeps on saying, Thomas, Thomas, come here. And the child keeps on saying, no, mom. She says, Thomas, come here. You, Thomas, I'm going to get angry now. I'll give you a time out, Thomas. She says, no, mom, I'm not coming. Thomas. Thomas, time out, Thomas. Go into your special corner, Thomas. No, mom, no. So as I'm watching all of this, I'm standing there like, wow. Is this real? Says, I was, I was in the mall, but I wasn't alone. I was with my mother. So my mother and me are now watching this white boy disrespect his mother. Thomas. And then the boy says, the boy ran to the mother and says, Bite me, mom. Bite me. He said, when, he, he said, when this boy said those things, I thought, hey, things are about to go north here. The mother says, Thomas, I don't like the way you talk. I don't like the way you talk. He says, what will you do, ma? Bite me. He said, my mother was standing next to me. We were both, we were both watching the same boy doing this. He said, my mother said, do you see what that boy is doing to the mother? And I said, yes, says, if you ever try to do it to me, I will show you. <laughs> Hallelujah. We need to enforce and reinforce the family system again. Our parents need to have the power to be able to instill the values that will make their daughters worth the suitors in future. That will make their sons worth the men, men we look up to in society. It starts from the home. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I speaking to somebody here? And in the next mountain, which is the seventh mountain, which I believe 
that in this year 2020, it must be your prerogative for you to be able to dominate in this mountain, the mountain of business. This is a dangerous mountain because of this mountain, this mountain fuels all the other mountains. This mountain of business, it is where money comes from that gives power to the other mountains. The mountain of business. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. You shall be a businessman. This year. In Jesus' name. You see, let me un make you understand something here. And I want you to understand this thing here. The children of Israel were delivered out of Egypt, right? And God even says it to remind them when they had built a golden calf. What did he say to them? He said this to them. He said, Moses, I delivered these people from the hands of Pharaoh. So God confirms in his own way that he has delivered these people. Deliverance has taken place from this, for these people. So deliverance came, play, came out. But you see, I want people to understand this one here when I'm talking about business. Deliverance is you coming out of Egypt. Freedom is you entering Canaan. The children of Israel were delivered and they went straight into the wilderness for 40 years. You can be delivered and still be going round and round in circles. You're not understanding this one here. You can be delivered. Coming from prayer line, pa, you are delivered. Man of God says you are free and walk straight into the wilderness. And God looks at you and says, but you are delivered. The mindset, the mindset, as long as it is not renewed, we will always have problems with the way people think. They were taken out of Egypt, but they always remembered Egypt. And says, we were better off in Egypt. The mindset was not set free. And that is the problem we have in 2020. Listen to me. I do not care where at your job they offer you $20,000 a month. Ask yourself, if they are giving me an employee $20,000, how much is the owner getting? If you are not building your own dream, if you are not building your own vision, you are helping somebody else build theirs. It's, a, it's the truth. That's life. If they pay you 20000 you do not break to us and say, I work at this company and they pay me 20000 What are you? You are a paid slave. What? What has enabled this man to have the power on a Monday to play golf? And then God said to me, what makes him to play golf on a Monday? Eh? Is that on the weekend, his employee... Hmm, was busy drinking what he gave you, not investing what he's supposed to invest. You see, you become a local champion in the industries there. Serious one, local champion. People look at you and they clap hands. Monya, big boss. Your reputation in the industry is there is the one that you are, the, you are you are one who is able to carry 10 bags of cement on your back. It says, ah, there is no one like you. You are the big boss. Why will you not be the big boss of money? You have a reputation of being a grave digger. When people die in, your fa in, the, in the community, they run to you. How do they pay you? Masses, skat, shibuku, beer. That's your payment. No future at all. How will we dominate and how will we have influence if our people's minds are logged only on looking for jobs and not creating them? If I tell you on Tuesday, we have got a prayer meeting here, people will not come. Why? Because three quarters are at work. It's not that they didn't want to come, but they asked to come and the boss said no. When we have crusades all over the world, when we have crusades, do you know when I have crusades all over the world, I know the people who follow me in those crusades. 
I know the men from this church. I know the women from this church. I know the men from my sons from all over the world who follow me. All the people who are able to follow me whenever I do my crusades all over the world are people who do not work for anyone. These are business owners. I'll just go. I'll be in Atlanta on the weekend. I'm doing a crusade. Don't worry, Papa, I'll be there. No question, no wahala, nothing. How will we dominate as the church when as the church ourselves right now, your prayer point is looking for a job. Your mindset needs to be delivered. There is no situation where a person can say there is no jobs. No, no, no. Jobs are there. It is that you do not have a mind. Ah, things are hard. Even electricity is just going. It's an opportunity. One man's problem is another one's solution. There is no electricity. Ah, so let me supply generators or solar panels or make money. Ah, fuel is scarce. Do you know that there is a guy we know? The guy is making money every day, thousands of dollars. I don't know where he gets the fuel. Then he tells you, I'll deliver it at your house. Any, lit any amount of liters I'll bring to you. Business fuels the economy. And he who controls the economy controls everything. A man called Bill Gates a man called Mark Zuckerberg got so powerful that the whole government of America set him down and says, you are too powerful and you're too rich for us not to be involved. We need to restrict you. He said, why? There is no law that stops me from being too powerful and too rich. He says, because the way you are going, we will not be able to control you in the future. They are afraid. They were so afraid. Then they said, look, we will allow you to do what you do without any hindrance if you allow some of our government officials to sit in your board of directors. I said, so what do you do? He says, Bill Clinton must be one of them. A former president must sit in your, in your company. May God bless you to that level this year. May your board of directors be full of presidents, billionaires, ministers, anyone of influence may they be in your board of directors and when they see you might they see you and they may say, say welcome madam yes sir how are you sir may it be your portion this year in 2020 the seven mountains of influence are our portion it is time we reclaim back our position in christ as the church to have dominance once again for the purpose and for the moving of the gospel of good news all over the world I do not know who I'm talking to today. But I believe that there is somebody listening to me. That God is giving one of those mountains. If not one, but all of those mountains. May you become too powerful to be controlled. For the sake of the gospel. May you have dominance in every area. Wherever you enter in 2020. May people bow down. Any place you enter. May people be filled with fear. Any place you enter, may people listen to your voice. I prophesy wherever you are that your voice in 2020 shall be heard. Your voice shall be heard. Your voice must 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 be heard. Your voice, be heard. Your voice will be heard. It is time. Oh my goodness. My sister. It is time. Woo, I see it. That empire is yours. You control it, my sister. My brother. Those banks are yours. You control them, my brother. Oh, my brother, the economy shall belong to you. It shall answer to you. You will cough and things will happen. You will breathe and things will move. This is your portion wherever you are. I say this is your portion in the name of Jesus. This is your portion in the name of Jesus. This is your portion in the name of Jesus. Somebody take this word if I'm talking to them.
Lift up your hand and say, I shall dominate. I shall dominate. Lift up your other hand and say, I shall dominate. I shall dominate. Lift it up and say, I shall dominate. I shall dominate. I do not, I do not. Where, where are my people here? Where are my people? Hey! Hey! I think my people are here. Enter, Papa. Listen. Yes. May God grow you so much in the areas of dominance. Yes. That even 10 generations of you, oh, yes. 10 generations from you, yes. shall still be dominating because of the. I receive. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I take it. I need somebody to get angry. Hey. Are you angry, somebody? Yes, Papa. Hey. Hey. If the world has not seen the first black or white. If the world has not yet seen the first female trillionaire, uh, look at your neighbor and say, uh, you are looking at them. Uh, I shall dominate. I shall dominate. Enter, Papa. Yeah. And the Bible says, as Jesus was on the first man of God, as Jesus was on the first, look at what he did. As he was on the first, the Bible says the devil came to him and took him to the top of a mountain and says, do you see all these kingdoms? Hey, hey. if only you bow down and worship me, then you would dominate. And Jesus says, I do not need to worship you to dominate because my worship belongs to another. We created these kingdoms you want to give me. Listen to me wherever you are. Yes. Enter, Papa. Hey. Hey. I refuse for you to be just a nobody. I receive. I refuse for you to be an entity. Oh, yes. I refuse for you to be just an error under the sun. Yeah. There is a difference in living and existing. You will not just exist. But your presence shall be felt in the name of Jesus. I receive it. Ah, somebody needs to get angry. Hey! I do not know which mountain you are getting angry about. But somebody needs to get angry. You are bigger than what we are seeing now. Yes, Papa. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are bigger than what we are seeing oh, now. Oh, yes, Papa. There is a mountain that is waiting for you to take charge. Yes, Papa. There is dominance that is waiting for you to take charge. Oh, yes. Ah. All right, Papa. Ah. Ah, look at your neighbor again and say, you shall dominate. You shall dominate. You are under a prophetic umbrella. Look at them from head to toe and tell them which area they shall dominate. You shall dominate in business. You shall dominate. You will dominate in ministry. Oh, Religion yes. shall be yours. You will dominate. Oh, yes. I tell them, tell them, prophesy. 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 Give me my mountain. On this day, Zerubbabel, give me my mountain. I want my mountain. Give it to me. Give me my mountain. Raka Satelekaya Resu Zakalebi Marie Katalabaya. Yes, somebody get angry. Oh, yes, say, Give me my mountain. Hey, give me my mountain. Hey, there is a mountain you came for today. Give me my mountain. Oh, yes, give me my mountain. Hey. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Begin to pray. Open your mouth. Pray, 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 pray. Rate kada pray, pray, pray. Give me my mountain today. Jesus Generation International Ministries. Richer city, change a nation, touch the world.